Hello, welcome to Beginning Engineers. Today I'm going to be talking about solenoids, electromagnetism at work. What are solenoids? A solenoid is an electromagnet that generates a controlled magnetic field through a wound coil, so a bunch of wire wrapped around itself. By passing an electric current through that wire, you generate that electric field. That electric field has poles, just like an old-fashioned magnet. If you have an object within those coils, an object that is affected by magnetism, it will be attracted to one of the poles and repelled from the other. But unlike a traditional magnet that has a north and south pole that are always active, you can turn the electricity off, allowing you to control when the magnetic field is in place and when it is not. So, okay, that's neat, but why do we really care about solenoids beyond that? We care because we can use them for so many things. Electronic locks. Think about the kinds you would see in hotels or offices. They help control blood flow in a dialysis machine. Automobiles use them for different reasons, whether it's gear selection or the AC unit. Sprinklers use them. And they're heavily used in industry. So almost any time you really need to control the flow of liquid or a gas, solenoids are a great option. Solenoids can be extremely fast, we're talking 30-40 milliseconds, and they are often built to last for millions of cycles. Just go online and try this shop for solenoids for five minutes. You'll see many different websites and many different types of solenoids. They really are everywhere. Okay, but how do they actually work? Well, we're not going to make this an hour-long physics lesson, but we can do a deeper dive into the properties behind solenoids. A lot of good examples start with a regular magnet. Think of a magnet that has a north pole and a south pole. Think about what happens when you get it near a magnetic object like a nail. The nail will either be repelled from the side you're pushing near it, or it will be attracted to it, based on what pole that object is attracted to. But after you move that magnet near the nail or similar object, the force is applied and it's over. The nail is either attracted or repelled from the magnet. It's not great if you want the motion to be repetitive. You can't just be sitting there pushing magnets around all day. This is what is so great about electromagnetism. By passing electric current through the wire, you can essentially turn the magnetic field on and then turn it off by not passing electricity through the wire through the coil. By giving the coil many loops, you just combine more and more of those fields into one larger field that goes a certain direction based on which way the electricity is flowing. There's a rule from this you might remember from physics. It's called the right hand rule. I put some pictures on this slide to help illustrate it. Basically, you point your fingers in the direction that the current is flowing. You can think of them wrapping around the coil like you're going to grab it. Then, whatever direction your thumb is pointing is the direction of the magnetic field. The force will be applied to a magnetic object in that direction. By having an object that is affected by magnetism within that coil, when you activate the field, it should move that object. It helps if you think about the object within the coil as floating in a sense, so it's in a sleeve of some sort that allows it to move easily. Activate the current, the field turns on, the object pushes. Turn it off, and then that object can return to its original position, but it usually needs some help to get back. And we usually see this is done using a spring or another magnet, a permanent magnet, to pull the object back into position. I keep saying coil and I keep saying object within the coil. Let's actually talk about the components of a solenoid and what they are called. The object within the coil that actually moves is referred to as the actuator or the plunger. The plunger will move in and out of the object or rotate based on the current passing through the coil, which is wrapped around it. Different types of solenoids or applications require the plunger to move different lengths or at different strengths, and a lot of this strength is determined by the coil. How many turns, what the material is, how tightly it's wound, etc. The plunger will often contact a backstop that can hold a spring or a permanent magnet or both as part of the design of the solenoid. Everything I've already described is held within a frame, the solenoid frame, 
and there are often housing components that allow you to attach the solenoid to an object so it can perform its job. All of these objects can vary a decent amount, which means there are many different types of solenoids with different purposes. So let's talk about some of those broad categories now. The different types of solenoids I'm going to talk about all fall within the category of electromechanical solenoids. There's several broad categories of solenoids, pneumatic, electromechanical. I think most of the time in engineering, you typically see electromechanical. So you use coil with electric current running through it, and it drives some sort of metal plunger. You have linear solenoids. That's a subcategory of electromechanical solenoids. The first type here is AC laminated. So by using a large number of thin sheets, called laminations, you can form a stack that drives a very fast closing time, so movement of that plunger. They're also known to have a very quiet sound when operating. I put a picture of one in the top right corner. Next we have a DC C-frame solenoid, and that C-frame name comes from the shape of the frame around the coil, and the DC comes from direct current as opposed to AC for alternating current. You have to understand with all these linear solenoids, there are different styles of design, but generally they're moving that plunger in and out. So they're pushing or they're pulling. Then you have DC D frame, or these are also called box frame solenoids. So they're very similar to the C frame, except they can have more power and they have a stronger build because the entire coil is enclosed by the case. It's not just the shape of a C around it, it's completely around it. The final category of electromechanical solenoids that I wanted to focus on is rotary solenoids. You have bistable rotary. So these are driven either clockwise or counterclockwise. So they're rotary solenoids. They go in a circular motion. They're not in and out. They're not linear. So this bistable solenoid will go either clockwise or counterclockwise and then stay locked in one of those positions. And the thing that keeps it locked in that position is a permanent magnet, like I mentioned before. But once that current is applied, the solenoid moves in a different direction. It doesn't stay still. These types of solenoids are generally used for routing objects. So think of high-speed sorting. You have one of these bistable rotary solenoids hooked up to a giant fin, and it can move left and right super quick depending on whether current's moving through it or not, and it can sort things. I like to think of sorting mail as an example. You have step rotary solenoids. These are like bistable rotary solenoids, except they have multiple positions. They're not just point one and point two. There's different stops in between. And then you have latching rotary solenoids. So they're very similar to bistable solenoids, except they are built to be in one position for a long time, a majority of the time. Think back to my previous example of a hotel door lock. You want the door to your hotel room to be locked most of the time, except for when you use your key card or code to unlock it. That would be when the current is applied to push that solenoid in a direction that unlocks the door. Thank you so much for watching this video about solenoids. I hope you now understand the basic function of a solenoid in some different types and how they can be used because they are widely used both in industry and on the commercial side and knowing a little bit about them will make you a better engineer. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe. Have a great day.